All right, welcome back, everybody, to Power Lunch. Time for a working lunch with the CEO of Duolingo, the tight labor market, making it difficult for businesses to find workers, but it also highlights uh, technology's role in providing new skills. Head of Friday's jobs report, John Fort, brings us up close with an entrepreneur whose company is easing the global labor pains. John. Yeah, Tyler, th this setup gets nicer every week. Every, every week. I was promised martinis, though. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, the, sorry, Will. Yeah. They're on their way. Well, <laughs> Louis Von Ahn is co-founder and CEO of Duolingo, a tech company that teaches languages. He's used to tackling comprehension challenges. When he was in college at Carnegie Mellon, he was actually part of the team that invented CAPTCHAs, those letters that you have to untangle no during kidding. the login process, yeah, to, to prove you're not a robot. I was there, I started having some thoughts about that. I talked to the guy who was my PhD advisor, who's Manuel Blum, who's a very famous computer scientist. And then together, uh, along with other sort of PhD students, uh, we, we sort of started riffing on you know, how we could solve this and eventually came up with the fact that computers have a hard time reading these distorted characters, but, but humans don't. So we have him to thank or blame, oh, depending yeah, on how you yeah. feel about CAPTCHAs. Now, after school, Von Ahn started Duolingo as a gamified app to teach English. He's since expanded into more languages, and thanks to a combination of ads and subscriptions, he's now running a public company worth more than $5 billion. But here's the insight in today's economy. He told me not everybody is using Duolingo to learn a foreign language. In Sweden, uh, um, the most popularly learned language on Duolingo is Swedish, which is weird. You would think, well, the Swedes already know Swedish. Why are they using Duolingo? Um, but it turns out, you know, when you go look, uh, these are people who are learning Swedish from Arabic. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You know, Sweden took a significant number of Syrian refugees. And, and basically, and, and you see that in a lot of European countries where it's either the number one or number two or number three most learned language is the language of the country. And it's a lot of times by, by people who have been you know, displaced. Um, and you see that a lot in Europe. So we're, we're very proud of that. And that's something, in fact, that's, that's one of the things that has made me the proudest about Duolingo. Now, when I first met Luis more than three years ago, he told me he started Duolingo partly because of the lack of opportunity in his native Guatemala. He also saw how the working class could get a significant leg up by learning English. Uh, drivers made more money uh, driving English-speaking tourists. Waiters make more money in international hotels. And now he sees technology unlocking opportunity uh, within domestic economies. Uh, so the question is, if Duolingo can upgrade a workforce like this, can companies and can countries cities accelerate it. Um, a particularly interesting question, I think, we're in Hispanic Heritage Month. Here's a guy who really took his background, his legacy, formed a company based on that and managed to make it profitable. Exactly. It's also, uh, I see in him, the, the, the heart of a problem solver. CAPTCHA was a, was a pro, t solved a problem that was waiting to be solved. Yeah. Duolingo is sort of the same thing. He identifies a problem, he comes up with a solution, and derives a very lucrative business from it. Absolutely. Welcome to his TED Talk. We have him there in <laughs> earlier days there. You can see him at, at Carnegie Mellon uh, in this earlier picture. And also in the earlier days of Duolingo, you see the guys there working on the problem. He, he is now expanding beyond just languages. First it was just English. Now it's multiple languages. You heard him talking about Swedish and others. Now he's doing English proficiency tests, hmm. right? Colleges are accepting that. They were already positioned during the pandemic. People weren't able to come in, take him in person. So that's uh, a growing business for them. And he's expanding into math. So this whole app-based, gamified, but accessible and affordable form of education potentially has likes from here. Sort of like Khan Academy or, yep. you know, in harmony with that? I mean, I think from an investor's point of view, if they're thinking, because Duolingo recently went public. That's right. Correct? They're yeah. probably tantalized by the opportunity that he could work with the college prep industry with the billions of dollars we know that it has, um, you know, or some of the others that you mentioned. Mac is taking, uh, you know, John and I are friends. We're neighbors, actually. Uh, 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 Mac is taking Italian. Does he have Italian? He does have Italian. He is taking Italian. Bang. And yeah. that's the thing. is like it's free with the ads, but if you want to get rid of the ads, you can subscribe. Yeah. And he, he uh, Luis has insisted, and the team insisted on keeping it accessible for people at whatever price range. He said he was proud that it was refugees and Bill Gates taking languages yeah. on Duolingo at the same time. Why Italian? My wife is half Italian. Oh. 
and it makes oh. it, it makes his grandfather very, very proud. Oh. I, he's never spoken any Italian around the house. I don't know if he knows how to say <laughs> where's the bathroom or what, but you know, uh, he's taking it. And, uh, but this would be a nice. Well, uh, introduce him nice to an Italian girl. You'll see how much he. <laughs> <laughs> You'll learn a lot. Yeah. John, thank you. Romance <laughs> languages. <laughs>